Languages can get along very well without them. They will survive just fine. They've survived for thousands of years. All the, uh, all the other languages that, that, that are still going strong, most of them don't have any language skulls. Now, it's interesting, you see, written language is different. Written language has to be taught, you have to go to school, you, have to, you, have to make, you, you do have to have guardians. Many, many cultural items require stewardship, many don't. Folk songs, you can't get them out of your head. Calculus isn't like that. <laughs> or, or have, maybe here at Caltech, I don't know. But. It just might be Caltech's different, but in general, some of our cultural products have to be very assiduously tended to, and fostered and preserved and protected, transmitted through the ages. Those are the domesticated memes. The wild memes are the ones like fashions and folk songs and spoken words that just evolve without anybody trying to evolve them. Then, of course, there's every sort of intermediate case. Now, how clever it was of sheep to acquire shepherds. <laughs> Look what they got for this. They got to outsource all their problems, protection from predators, food finding, health maintenance. <laughs> and all of this at a rather small cost, some loss of free mating. It's been a tremendous bargain for those sheep. By the way, Domesticated animals have smaller brains than their wild relatives. Even, even normalizing for the animals that have been raised for meat and so they tend to be, have heavy bodies. No, use it or lose it is, is a motto that really applies in evolution. And if you don't need your brain, it goes. And they don't need their brain because they've got stewards. They've got people that are their guardians who are taking care of them so they can get stupid and fat. <laughs> so, the sheep weren't clever, of course, but it was a very clever move. The nearest wild relatives of the sheep you could probably carry off in a few arcs, but the sheep, there's, I don't know, hundreds of millions of sheep in the world today. It's a huge fitness boost, if that's what you care about. The cleverness is not the sheep's cleverness, but it's the cleverness of natural selection itself. This is Leslie Orgel's second rule, quip made by Francis uh, Crick some years ago, evolution is cleverer than you are. Now, what he meant by this, of course, is not intelligent design, not Francis Crick. <laughs> and in fact, I think if you want to understand what is illusory, what is quite frankly a hoax, in intelligent design. If you just understand Orgel's second rule, you can see what's wrong with intelligent design. What Orgel's second rule tells you is that although the process of natural selection has no foresight, no purpose, no intelligence, the products of evolution are brilliant. They are incredibly ingenious you can reverse engineer them and be staggered with awe at how incredibly ingenious and clever and devious these designs are. But it's not the purposeful intelligence of anybody. Something similar happened to the wild memes of religion. They got themselves domesticated. They acquired stewards who were prepared to devote their lives to their flourishing. But you know there's a quid pro quo. Many features of that dairy cow are not so much for the benefit of the cow as for the benefit of the dairy herder. That's the price of domestication. So that when we look at religious memes, at the memes of organized religion, the domesticated memes, we should be on the lookout for rather different selection pressures to have been operating than in the wild days. I got you as far as a bunch of God memes or supernatural entity memes uh, uh, in the wild religion, but now we have to start thinking about the uses of domesticated God memes. One of them that, uh, again, this is speculation, but it's, uh, 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 it's guided by facts and it's uh, subject to confirmation. We can, design, we can design inquiries and investigations and experiments which can shed light on whether it's true or not. 
One idea which I've loved for years comes from Julian Jaynes' remarkable, eccentric, but brilliant book, uh, The Origins of Consciousness and the Breakdown of the Bicameral Mind. He suggests, that book has about a hundred really good ideas and about a thousand bad ones, but <laughs> this is one I think of the good ones. He suggests that when civilizations began to, when cities began to get large, when people began to live in larger groups, decision making became really onerous and difficult. People just didn't know how to make up their minds. And it was harder than it had ever been before. And so they ended up sort of in desperation looking for what he called exopsychic means of decision making. Like flipping a coin, like consulting tea leaves, like throwing the I Ching, like sacrificing animals and looking at their entrails burning virgins and seeing which way the smoke blows, you know. <laughs> in fact, there are hundreds of different techniques that, e that evolved back in those days for, for flipping a coin. A particularly useful one was basically to, to consult the gods. Because that was useful for many reasons. First of all, it got you off the hook. If the decision you made was wrong, well, don't blame me, you know. I, <laughs> I'm just the messenger. I got the, I got the idea from the <coughs> God, who can never, of course, contradict you. <laughs> nice thing about the idea is that a practice like that can spread without anybody understanding the rationale for it. They don't have to understand the rationale. Any more than the sheep have to understand the rationale for domesticating themselves. It's a good idea, but they don't have to recognize it. Same thing is true of these. Uh, one of my favorite hypotheses uh, for further exploration is McLennan's hypothesis that shamanic healing rituals, which were very widespread and culturally transmitted, led to the convergent evolution, convergent social evolution. Again and again and again, the shamanic healers discovered, reinvented, and refined basically techniques of hypnotic induction. That what the rituals of shamanic healing are, are hypnotic induction rituals. And hypnosis has genuine medical benefits. There's many things, particularly for analgesia and for the relief of many psychosomatic or, or partly psychological conditions. Won't do you much good for a broken leg. But hypnosis has some genuine medical uh, applications where it works well. And back in those days, before there was any other kind of medicine, if you were not susceptible to hypnosis, you didn't have any health insurance. <laughs> there could be quite a strong selection pressure based on susceptibility to hypnosis. And that could then create a bounce in the genes so that you have a cultural genetic coevolution for susceptibility to hypnotic induction. Now we know, we've confirmed really, a similar story already with regard to lactose tolerance in adulthood. Those of us, there are probably a few people here who are not lactose tolerant in, as adults. Are there any lactose intolerant people here? Yes, you're normal for a mammal. Mammals in general are not capable of, of digesting milk after they're weaned. We're the only mammals really that can. It's abnormal for mammals but normal for human beings and it is a genetic change in most of us which can be traced back to those lineages of our ancestors who kept dairy herds and who drank the milk raw rather than fermenting it or turning it into something like cheese. That's pretty well established by Luca Cavalli Sforza and his colleagues. Then of course one that everybody knows is the surrogate police. I like to tell the story about the, the little town in Maine where I have my farm and and you approach it, and there's a sign on the edge of town that says, you know, uh, welcome to Brooksville, your speed is uh, uh, radar controlled. Somebody says to the, to the chairman of the board of selectmen, he says, that must have been pretty expensive. He says, no, it costs about five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> just get a piece of plywood and some paint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. These are among the uses of uh, domesticated God means. So the claim in the book is that organized religions descended from folk religions. When we became conscious, deliberate stewards, this changed everything. Now, 